In this video, we will explore creating a file explorer using the tree view and data grid elements in the WinUI platform. This combination allows us to build an intuitive interface for efficiently navigating through files and folders. For educational purposes, we will develop a basic file explorer application that showcases the functionality of navigating through folders using the tree view, displaying file details in the data grid, and implementing sorting functionality. XAML. The grid element defines a grid in which other elements are placed. It has three columns and one row. The tree view element represents a tree-like view of the file system structure. It is placed in the first column and first row of the grid. Various properties such as horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, margin, is double tap enabled, and event handlers are specified for this element. Additionally, a tree view item template is defined, which contains an image and text associated with the data object. Grid splitter is placed in the second column and first row of the grid. It is used to resize adjacent columns or rows in the user interface. The data grid element represents a tabular view of data, placed in the third column and second row of the grid. It is bound to a collection of objects of type file details, defined in the code, through the item source property. Table columns with headers, file name, date modified, type, and size are defined, which are bound to corresponding properties of file details objects. C Sharp Code. File Details defines the structure of a record to represent information about files, including name, modification date, type, size, and path. Data Grid Files 
a collection of file details objects used to populate a data grid, which displays information about files. Tree item represents a tree item in a tree view containing an image, text, and path. The method initialize tree view initializes the tree contents considering the root disks and special user folders. The drive info.get drives method is used to retrieve information about all available disks on the computer. For each disk, a storage folder element is created using the storage folder.get folder from path async method. Then, for each disk, a tree item object representing the tree item is created. The tree item object includes an image, text, with the disk name and volume label, if it exists, and the disk path. This object is added to the tree items collection. For each special user folder, desktop, downloads, documents, etc., a storage folder element and a tree item object representing that folder are created. Each tree item object also includes an image, text, with the folder name, and the folder path. These objects are also added to the tree items collection. After initializing all tree elements, the tree items collection is set as the data source for the tree view control. Thus, the tree will contain all root disks and special user folders. The tree view expanding method is called when a node is expanded in the tree view. It checks if the node content is a tree item object. It retrieves the list of subfolders for the specified path contained in the tree item object. For each subfolder, it creates a new tree node representing the subfolder. It creates a folder image and adds it to the tree item object. It sets the node text as the subfolder name. It sets the subfolder path in the tree item object. It adds the created tree node to the child elements of the current node specified in the treeView expanding event args method arguments. The treeView collapsed method is called when a node is collapsed in the treeView. It checks if the node has child elements. If it does, it clears the list of child elements of the node to remove all its child nodes. It sets the has unrealized children flag to true. The treeView double tapped method is called when an item is double clicked in the treeView. It checks if any node is selected in the tree view. If not, the method exits. It checks if the selected node is expanded. If the selected node is not expanded, the method calls expand to expand the node. If the selected node is already expanded, the method calls collapse to collapse the node. The getFileSize method takes a file path and returns a string representing the file size in a readable format. It creates a file info object that provides information about the file at the specified path. It checks the file size. If the file size is 0, it returns 0. It sets up a suffixes array containing file size units. It initializes a counter variable to track the index of the suffixes array. It initializes a number variable containing the file size in bytes. In a while loop, it checks whether to convert the file size to larger units of measurement. If so, it divides the file size by 1024 and increments the counter variable. It returns a string containing the converted file size with one decimal place and the corresponding suffix from the suffixes array. The treeView tapped method is called when an item is clicked in the treeView. It checks if any node is selected in the treeView. 
It gets the content of the selected node and checks if this content is a tree item object. It clears the data grid files collection to prepare it for filling with new data. It gets the list of subfolders and files in the folder corresponding to the selected node using the directory.get directories and directory.get files methods. For each subfolder, it creates a file details object representing the directory and adds it to the data grid files collection. This object contains the directory name, last modified date, type, an empty string for size, since size is not applicable for directories, and the directory path. For each file, it creates a file details object representing the file and adds it to the data grid files collection. This object contains the file name, last modified date, type, file size, and the file path. The open in explorer click method is called when the open file in explorer menu item is clicked in the context menu of the data grid control. It checks if any item is selected in the data grid, it checks if the index of the selected item is greater than minus 1. It retrieves the path to the selected item from the data grid files collection using the index of the selected item. It checks if the file exists at the specified path using file exists. If the file exists, it opens it in Windows Explorer, selecting it using slash select. If the file does not exist, it checks if the directory exists at the specified path using directory exists. If the directory exists, it opens it in Windows Explorer. The data grid sorting method is called when the columns of the data grid control are sorted. Here's what it does. It checks if the tag attribute is set for the column being sorted. The tag attribute is used to determine the column by which sorting is performed. If the tag attribute is set, it retrieves the value of the tag attribute, indicating which field to sort by. It determines the sorting direction, ascending or descending, based on the current sorting direction of the column. It uses a switch statement to select the field by which to sort. It updates the item source of the data grid control to reflect the sorted data. For this, a new observable collection file details collection is created, sorted according to the selected field and sorting direction. It sets the sorting direction for the current column. For all data grid columns, it sets sort direction to null, except for the current column, to reset sorting indicators on other columns.